Parkman. Más hack. Después que le componen. Eglisa. Today I was woken up by voices that seemed pretty close to me. It was just these hard-working guys. Even the kids are in on it. It's vacation and they're continuing their education for the real world. Cape Verde has a fine tradition of world-class fishermen. catching small fish that regularly wander the bay in schools. They mostly use them for bait for bigger fish. Several boats get in and help, then they'll share the rewards. Leaving a board guarantees the best harbor views, don't you think? Today we're to ship out, but before that we'll have to go into the city to fetch an essential item for liveaboard cruisers, my dinghy, which is here in the capable hands of Tuga. Unfortunately, my dinghy is worse off than I thought. This is Tuga, and he said that the port side burst at the seams under pressure. No dinghy for me today. <laughs> we'll be using Peter's diggy anyways. Now let me present someone to you. Marie's just my new crewmate today, we're going to Bovista. Okay, let's go. <laughs> Untying the lines at this moment. Here we go. Bye-bye. Let's go. It was about three in the afternoon, and after filling up with diesel and water, we headed up the South Vicente Canal. We got Marisia as my crew member, my compañera. Marinera, assistant, <laughs> co-capitan. <laughs> it's gonna be cool. We left in good conditions. The wind isn't too strong. Going up the canal right now to get around the island. And Galapan goes fast, man. Now that he's all cleaned up and fixed up. Uh huh. Man, what a difference since we hauled out Galapan. He easily gained two knot speed. taken many people sailing, always as guests. I don't need anyone with sailing experience, just someone with a good attitude. I have three simple rules on my vessel. No drama, no panic, and no stress. Any one of these elements come into play, and we'll have to adjust. It seems some people are just made to sail. Marisa here, demonstrating again how to eat mango Cape Verde style, is one of those people. She's simply great to have aboard. to say again how great Galapan is doing. We're averaging around 6 knots speed with about 12 knots wind. We had about an hour head start of Peter, because Galapan is usually playing catch up. But so far, we're keeping well ahead of Peter, and this went on through the night. We had to push with the motor for a few hours. The wind usually drops at night, especially windward of islands we pass by. I made pizza toast for breakfast. Easy hot food at this time is comforting. Mauricia had slept most of the night, and I nodded off here and there. My course was well offshore and away from any dangers. Dear morning. <laughs> Did you sleep good? Yeah. And you? Yeah. It's a good night. 
tranquil, not too much wind. Yeah. Okay, now I'm giving you breakfast. Pizza with piri piri sauce. Pizza with my garlic. Nice. <laughs> cool. Yeah? I will be. Come here, Unant. Whatever you cook. <laughs> Talk to Peter. He's got engine problems. His engine just stopped for some reason. He's over there too, real close, and we're real close, about an hour away from Boa Vista. So let's hope he gets his motor going, or otherwise I may have to tow him. But there's some wind. I think he can make it in. So Maurice is chilling out. We were doing great time. We could see land. I had pushed a bit with the motor to arrive in the afternoon, but we had a problem. Well, it looks like Peter's problem is that he ran out of gas. His uh, fuel gauge, he believes, is broken. He thought he had a full tank, and he doesn't. So he's going to try to anchor just by sail. And this is perfect conditions to do that. This is a perfect place to do that. It's a good exercise. So. I'm just behind him, just in case there's any issue. My motor is working. I haven't turned it on yet, but uh, just in case I need to give him a tow or any assistance. And I have one liter of fuel that I could toss to him, just in case. But that's it. Hey, it looks like Peter did it, huh? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, now our turn to anchor. We get the engine. You did it! So there we go. Peter anchored under sail without any problems. Uh, he handled the situation just fine. Conditions were perfect for this exercise. Perfect place to do that. And uh, here we are, 10, 20 meters away from each other. Uh, we're gonna go over there and uh, celebrate, me and Mauricio. <laughs> Anyways, this is great, we're in Boa Vista. And uh, let's discover this place. Let's discover this uh, fantastic um, little Sahara Desert that they have here. I've never really been to it since I've been here before. Maria said it was great. She didn't get sick. She didn't complain. She's interested. She wants to learn. She's happy. And she sleeps a lot. Yeah. <laughs> so do I. <laughs> and here we are. And here we are. Uh -huh. <laughs> now we're going to take a bath, swim, because Mia was like getting all sweaty from raising the sail and everything and all salty. So we're going to jump in this nice water and then go see Peter and Lily. Yeah. Cheers, baby. It's one of my best friends in the world. And plus, look, isn't she beautiful today? She thinks she's gangster, but... I am. <laughs> Don't listen to him. <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, she's gangster, all right. <laughs> oh, I'm choking on my words. We had to check in with the police as well as getting diesel. Two immediate priorities. The bay here is wide and shallow, so it's a pretty long ride to shore. is still hurting, damn it, so I found a quick solution. Peter opted to walk a few blocks. We took the taxi driver's number down because we'll be needing him. His name is Manu. Checking in with the police is a pain yet painless. It takes about 20 minutes when you have all the proper documents and permissions. Trouble mask, favor, man. As I've stated before, all Cape Verdean nationals must have an official permission from the Port Authority to come aboard a foreign vessel. It will be requested when presenting the passenger list at the next destination. If you don't have it, you'll get a $500 fine. 
And within a couple hours, we were heading back to our boat. Peter had gotten diesel as well as fuel for the spirit. But first, he had to get his engine started. Just drying out the squirt bottle to get the diesel in the engine. So the news is Peter did it. He cleaned out his injectors and everything. These girls just talking, talking, talking. <laughs> he got the he got the engine going and he is hard as hell. Now believe this or not, he's gonna make his hamburgers. And he's doing his striptease. <laughs> then we're gonna move the boat the boats a little closer into the shore. It's really far here. Normally it's Peter uh, Great mechanic, man of all trades, fine lover, good friend. He makes great fucking food. Great burgers, check this out. Mm -hmm. Mario, okay? Mario. It's on it. <laughs> Marius is the person that eats most hot sauce I've ever seen in my entire life. She pours it on more than a Mexican, more than anybody I've ever seen. She just pours it on. If you taste anything that she eats, she's put my legato on it, which is hot sauce. You will cry, burn, and cough for hours. great to have you along on this voyage. Give this a thumbs up and subscribe if you enjoyed this series. Me and Galapan promise you a good time every Wednesday. So welcome aboard. Mm -hmm.